everyone, it's Keely for Soy and Shay, and thank you for joining me for another soap making video. Um, in today's soap, with winter just around the corner, hopefully, and by a customer request, I have decided to add peppermint and eucalyptus into the range. It's a really bright, fresh, nose clearing fragrance with notes of peppermint leaf, pine needle, eucalyptus, and menthol, all on a base of vanilla bean and musk. And to give it that extra little um, zing I have put in about 3% of eucalyptus peppermint essential oil into that fragrance oil weight so that should give it that extra little burst of freshness now I've got two plans in my head of how I want this soap to look depending upon how the fragrance oil actually actually behaves it will either be a layered soap if it thickens up for me nicely or we will have a really nice swirl, drop swirl going through it. So we'll see what happens there. Um, in any which case, the colours that I'm using, I have some titanium dioxide, which I'll also be adding a little bedazzled mica from my Micro Obsession into, just to get that little bit of glistening in the whites. And then for the green sort of colours, I have got elusive, Olive Grove and Opulence Micas, all from my Micro Obsession. So we've got two different greens and a little bit of gold because you always see that golden colour through the eucalypts. In my big bucket here, I have my oils, and once again, I'm using the palm oil recipe. In my last video, I um, discussed about changing up my recipe to incorporate just that little bit of palm oil in to make sure everyone gets a longer lasting more um, solid bar of soap that doesn't turn to mush once you get down to the middle and I've also got my lye water here so I'll start by pouring my lye water into my oils giving it a mix up and then we'll split it out for the colors before stirring in the fragrance colors I have mixed them up with just a little bit of olive oil and um, this is just because I've got such small amounts in these buckets that I didn't want to have to mix for too long and I want these colors to stay fluid but I kind of want the white to accelerate a little bit on me so what I'm going to do is just pour my titanium dioxide in here pour some fragrance in and see how it behaves and then decide from there how I want to do the rest of the soap. Okay, so I can see that this is starting to do what I actually want it to do. I was so afraid that because I wanted it to actually thicken up this time that it wouldn't. So I'm going to give this a quick scrape down to make sure that I've got all of my batter in here white. And then I'm going to grab my mould and I'm going to pour about half of this into the mould. Now, when I posted pictures the other day of my raspberry lemonade, I did get a comment on there saying that they would have liked to have seen some marbling. Now, um, 
I had said that that raspberry lemonade set up a little bit too quick for me to do a marbling effect and I'll try it on another soap. Now I had read that this one doesn't um, accelerate but I think with my soap recipe it does either that or I just haven't quite got my soaping temperatures right um, with my new recipe but we'll get there. It's still workable and we'll just end up with a completely sort of new and original design. So I'm saying that this kind of is going the way I was hoping where I could get them into an in the pot swirl. Oops. Right, so before this thickens up much more, I am going to get this into my loaf mould. thickened on me here but you know what this is really good because the original idea I had in my mind for this soap was to do a white layer on the bottom and then to do the marbled green and gold through the middle and then to do another white layer on the top I just wasn't expecting it to be like putting cream cheese frosting onto the top of my soap here but at least that first plan had worked my other plan was that if the um, if it was going to stay too fluid was to pour the white in and then drop swirl that bucket of colors through so one thing I have learned with my soap making adventures is always have at least two plans in your head of how you want the soap to look two very different plans and techniques just in case something does um, start to go a little bit wrong on you or doesn't go as everyone else says it goes I've also got a feeling I'm working under a photography light to make sure everyone gets some good lighting and I can feel the heat coming off it so I'm wondering if that is some of my problem with my soap batters accelerating on me so I'll have to see about getting some different sort of lighting that's not so hot and see if that also helps but I'm just going to give this a real good smack down and then I'm going to come put the rest of the soap on the top. out and this is sitting pretty high because I wanted it to be a nice high top so one of the things I say to people in groups when they say oh this was a total flop or something else unless you're actually making videos and you tell people exactly how that bar of soap is meant to look you're never really going to create a, a bad soap unless it just is unless you've not calculated your oils right or your lye mix or anything like that just because it's not looking how you thought it should look, it doesn't make it a bad bar of soap. And something else that I have learned in the years that I've been making, not only um, soaps, but also things like candles and stuff like that, what I think looks bad, someone else actually may really love the look of it. So I've also kind of learned that when I'm smelling fragrances, if I hate the smell of that particular fragrance oil it is likely to be a best seller for me so I just put my big girl pants on and I make it in those horrible smells and I keep all the nice ones for myself because usually the one the fragrance oils I fall in love with are the ones that nobody else wants <laughs> so, but you know that's business you have to do what um, 
what the public want, not necessarily what you want. But as I always say to people, just because it doesn't look how you expected it to look, it's not a bad soap, it's not a flop and it's not a failure. It's just different. So always remember when going in for making your soaps, always have alternate sort of plans in your head so when it does accelerate and you can't do that pretty little drop swell um, be prepared to do a layer instead um, or prepared to have a, a plop soap so it comes out looking like camouflage it won't be ugly or just not be what you had in your mind but as I said your customer doesn't need to know that unless you actually tell them that this was not how it was meant to look so that's just what I tell people and what I try and live by as well so I'm ne although sometimes you think oh that's a shame it didn't work it's still going to be sellable so just as a final touch because I know that this um, soap will go for both men and women we're not putting any glitter on but I am just going to sprinkle down the middle with some coloured Epsom salts and I can already smell my, my nose is feeling nice and fresh. Um, so hopefully um, it all, the smell or the fragrance oil sticks throughout its cure time. And especially with having that bit of essential oil in there as well. So I think that should do. With that hopefully very pretty middle, once we get it cut, we won't need too much on the top there. So there it is. We have our peppermint and eucalyptus loaf of soap this will sit here for about 24 hours before I come back and cut it tomorrow and then we'll see what we ended up on the inside and hopefully not too many air bubbles now just off camera I'm going to give this a quick smack down just to make sure that all those salts stick so I'll see you tomorrow so I have come back about 24 hours later to cut peppermint and eucalyptus I'm really happy with this. There are a few air bubbles up the side of the loaf here, which is to be completely expected considering how thick this batter went on me. I am going to cut it on its side so I don't get any drag marks from that salt that's on the top. Now, last night I came back into my studio to check on a few other things I had going and to my absolute horror, this had turned pink. And I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. Oh no, we're not stuck. Um, I couldn't believe what I was actually seeing on here. Um, and I thought, well, hopefully this morphs back to a cream colour by morning. But if not, you know what? Peppermint at Christmas time tends to be a red colour. So if it's pink, it's pink. And let's hope that it matches in with that green. So I'm going to have a look and see. And we'll grab this end piece first. And this is the inside of peppermint and eucalyptus. So I think because of how thick the um, batter got, it didn't get um, too marbled as I was wanting, but it's still a really pretty pattern in there. I can see a little bit of glycerin rivers forming in the bottom there, but that really adds to the whole look of the soap. So I'm pretty happy with how this one has turned out it smells beautiful and apart from the few little air bubbles on the side the inside of the soap looks really good and that to me is an added bonus there so I hope you've enjoyed watching me make my peppermint and eucalyptus soap if you did please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and if you haven't already why not subscribe to the channel and I will be bringing you another video very soon Thanks for watching. Bye.